This chapter in our series may be a little dark, but let this darkness be an initiation into revelation all the same. Life is a beautiful dance of cosmic energy for the indivisible spirit, a glittering reflection of possibility for each of us to experience what we want. But as we grow up and walk through the journey of the soul, we discover that life is filled with illusions and traps, some so dangerous that they can keep us all stuck if we're not careful. It could be said that humanity is on an awakening journey, but in order for us to reach our enlightenment, we must pass through the shadows both within us and in the world. And just seeing the traps is not enough. We have to embody a state that transcends them. Meaning itself is the key. In some traditions, it is described that reality is imbued with a negative force which gives rise to all suffering and chaos. This force has been identified as Satan, the adversary, Mara, or simply death. In the ancient Egyptian religion, this force in myth is characterized by Set, who killed his brother Osiris, the force of good. All such myths and religious ideas are reflected in the duality of the material world, wherein positive and negative polarities are ever present. And we see these polarities reflected to us everywhere, from day and night, yin and yang, and the positive and negative aspects of the atom. Mystic teachings describe that the antagonist was written into the fabric of the reality we are part of by design, because it creates the illusion of density that allows for the material reality to exist. Otherwise, everything would dissolve into light. In Napoleon Hill's book, Outwitting the Devil, he interviews this force of evil and learns that the devil claims to bear responsibility for the negative portion of every atom. Quoting the devil himself, he says, my physical appearance? Why, my dear Mr. Earthbound, I have no physical body. I would be handicapped by such an encumbrance as those in which you earthbound creatures live. I consist of negative energy, and I live in the minds of people who fear me. I also occupy one half of every atom of physical matter and every unit of mental and physical energy. Perhaps you will better understand my nature if I tell you I am the negative portion of the atom. The other half is occupied by my opposition. The opposition is what you earthbound call God. The presence of evil in the material universe gives rise to the element of story, something that brings meaning to the adventure of life. There's a reason most great saints and masters taught in stories, and are not our own life stories the greatest adventure we are currently living out every single day? You see, the adversary is both inside and outside of us, manifesting in our world and in our own egos. Within us, it is that which pulls us out of our natural state of existence, peaceful and enlightened, harmonious and wise and loving, and into states of shame, guilt, apathy, grief, fear, desire, anger, and pride. These inner states delude the senses and keep us limited in mind, body, and spirit focused on the material world, not realizing that there are subtle energies informing the material through us, including our thoughts and feelings. Outside of us, it appears as the chaos in the world, both through people and in nature, from viruses to natural disasters, or human technologies and social systems that create suffering and keep people isolated, weakened, or in pain. Really, anything that causes people to become divided against each other, to hate one another, or to become afraid and lost. That is the adversary at work. Not to mention, even the social media systems, the algorithms themselves, are certainly an AI matrix illusion too, serving us content that keeps us continually watching the same kinds of things over and over. But you see, we must not be angry and try and point the finger at someone or something, because this force is not a materially manifested entity although it can become concentrated in people who surrender to it. There can be avatars of evil, just as there are avatars of good. Instead, we must become exceptionally mindful of that which lifts us up towards higher consciousness and that which pulls us away from our own inner divinity and do our very best to act on those impulses, the good ones, every single day. So the traps of the matrix can be understood as taking place in multiple dimensions physically, mentally, and emotionally, 
and spiritually. Let's go through these one by one. Physical traps include everything that keeps our focus and attention on only that which can be felt or known through the five senses, keeping us so focused there that we do not seek anything beyond. Food is a huge one for a lot of people. It's actually frightening to consider how much food in every grocery store have so many chemicals or massive quantities of processed sugar in them, which when we consume them, destroys the mitochondria in our cells, saps our energy, fogs our mind, and limits our mental clarity. You can check out Healing With Food, the movie, if you want to learn more. Other physical traps include overactive engagement on social media and entertainment, the addiction to sexual gratification and things of this nature, alongside the material attachment and constant drive for money or attention. Now, this is not to suggest that food or sex or money are intrinsically bad. They are important aspects of life. But in the mainstream world that we live in today, the systems that we have built around these root three energy centers have been so perverted, twisted, poisoned, or polluted, and so many people end up falling into addictions of constantly needing more and more of these kicks just to get through the day. It is very unfortunate that when we're not even aware that this is taking place and making no effort to overcome those addictions or traps, it degrades our bodies and disconnects us from our soul. But every dimension of traps do cross over with each other. Just as the physical traps affect the mind, the mental and emotional traps can affect the body and the spirit. Mental traps are thought patterns and beliefs that are degrading to ourselves and others, and ways of thinking that produce depression and anxiety and keeping ourselves bogged down in heavy emotional states without attempting to resolve it or look to the core of where it comes from. When we have traumatic experiences or spend time with other people who are cruel or hateful, we may end up thinking like them. As many know, we become like the people we spend the most time with. These kinds of traps may be difficult to overcome and often are, but please know that if you are struggling with anything we've discussed so far, you are not alone. And there's a very simple and powerful tool that you can use to overcome them. And we're gonna talk about these very, very soon. But we must expand this scope a little bit bigger. Mental traps are also created by countries at large. It is a global challenge that we face. Many political races today are more focused around attacking the opponent rather than identifying and pursuing virtuous principles. All of these things can change when the people in mass stop paying attention to that which is negative and identifying that which is good, true, and pure and focusing on that. When the lines of right and wrong become so blurred that anyone can justify their position and use it to violently attack another, whether verbally or even physically, there is a serious problem. Finally, spiritual traps are the deepest rooted and among the most important to overcome, stemming from a disconnection with the soul or spirit. Spirituality must be understood as a union with the vitalizing essence through which our consciousness engages with mind and body. Through our vast history, religions have existed to support the union with that divine connection but we have also seen that the business of religion has often instead taught people habitual patterns to get locked into instead of showing them how to have direct inner experiences themselves. For instance, today we see many people seeking connection with the divine for one hour a week by offering lip service to God in a temple or a church. While many churches do facilitate deeper connection, so many are wrapped up and the fanciful display of praise and hallelujah that it doesn't invite any individual to go deeper into themselves and nurture that inner connection. If one wants a spiritual connection with their divine origin source, one hour a week should be replaced with the awareness that every moment and every action is an opportunity to be in touch with the spirit and let that inner power guide us in all that we do. Overcoming this trap, often begins with regular meditation and prayer and integrating other spiritual practices, including reading sacred books or spending quality time with nature every single day. Time is very precious and we should not waste it. When we take the time to reach up to spirit, spirit will help lift us up to it. With all of these matrix traps, 
The solution is simpler than we realize. Each of us have the power to change the reality that we're in. And it starts by going within and cultivating inner qualities and states that resonate to the life that we want. Our thoughts can be experienced as electric fields and our feelings as magnetic ones. When we concentrate together strong, positive thoughts and feelings through deep integrated meditative states, we cultivate a powerful electromagnetic field through our bodies, which changes the way that we think and feel and engage in the world, which then further can even change the types of experiences and opportunities that come our way. In contrast, if we assume the problems are always outside of us, we may attempt to solve our problems by attacking that which we disagree with. Now certainly, there is a place in life for a fight. Even in the Bhagavad Gita, we find Krishna encouraging the warrior Arjuna to fight in a holy war. He said, Considering your dharma, you should not vacillate. For a warrior, nothing is higher than a war against evil. The warrior confronted with such a war should be pleased, Arjuna, for it comes as an open gate to heaven. But if you do not participate in this battle against evil, you will incur sin, violating your dharma and your honor. It is this idea that is imbued in the new Nine of Swords, found in Patch Tarot 3. And bringing things back to the beginning, just consider the value of story. Could you imagine the end of Lord of the Rings with no final battle because Aragorn thought, I would rather be a peaceful monk? That was not his destiny. But to ground this idea in for each of us here, let us consider. Hate always begets more hate. And in this great war on consciousness, our battles may be more often internal than external. We should go to war against our addictions and bad habits and do battle against our limiting beliefs. Upon winning this inner war, one becomes free and they go beyond the torments of life, raising their consciousness and become an instrument of love and healing for all. The process of ascension is a gradual turning away from that which is delusive and gently adopting better habits and ways of thinking. The more time that we take to seek spiritual connection, the faster we will go. Now we know scientifically that one of the best ways of overcoming the illusions within is through meditation. And today we are excited to share one of the most powerful tools to aid you in your transcendental meditations, the Muse Brainwave headset. This is one of the most sophisticated pieces of brain training technologies that exists on the planet today. It, alongside the companion app, is designed to help you overcome limiting beliefs, learn more about how your own mind operates, and even access superconscious states through a host of guided meditations and practices. Using the headset, you can determine just how deep you are really going. Identifying the various brain waves, like beta, alpha, theta, and gamma, all reveal where your focus is moment to moment. Most people spend their time in day to day in beta and a bit of alpha, but it's when we go deeper into meditative states, reaching theta and gamma, where we are able to powerfully retrain ourselves by accessing subconscious and superconscious states and inner programming. And that's where the Muse headset comes in. Using it, you can learn to easily access the superconscious states through meditation. And in accessing that place, effortlessly rewrite your mental habits, patterns, and limiting beliefs to become all that you truly are. If this sounds good to you, check out the link in the description to order your headset today. You'll be amazed by what you can accomplish with such a supportive technology. Enjoy.